<laughs> All right, everybody. We are live. And I'm just gonna take a moment to get a set up here real quick, y'all. How are you doing, Erica? I'm doing good. Good deal, I'm glad. Okay, we're gonna get going. <laughs> Well, everybody, thank you so much for tuning in tonight to another interview with M419 Global. And we have an awesome special guest on here tonight, Ms. Erica Isley-Smith. And she is going to be sharing a lot of wonderful things with us. Um, I am not going to go into all our social media hoopla tonight because I want to get right into it with her. We've got a lot to talk about. Yes, we do. So anyway, I want to introduce you to Erica Isley Smith. She is the founder of RE3 Worship. I'm very excited. She is my good friend and my sister. And she just is an amazing woman of God. Um, her and I met, gosh, it's been almost a year ago, right? Next month? Yeah. yeah. Next month. Um, that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> years gone by um and i met her and basically it was an instant connection i knew that i knew that i knew that i knew that she was not only my sister but she was also like totally filled with the holy ghost and we had church in the retail store that i was working at and everybody was watching and looking at us like we was a little cray cray but we was really excited and we had a lot of fun and it was one of those moments where you knew that God had orchestrated that moment in time because it was not long after that, I think, Erica, we moved back here. <laughs> so it was just like that one encounter uh, in person. And then I didn't see you again in person until September <laughs> of this year. You came to my house and for a That's prayer. right. That's right. That was the yeah, only I other time. I forgot about that. I forgot about mm -hmm. that. But anyway, <laughs> see, it's just, yeah, we need more visits. So anyway, <laughs> I, I want to um, get into the interview with you, Erica. I want you to talk to us about your family and your children, your husband, how long you've been married, all that good stuff. Okay. So I have been married uh, for 11 years. I have a nine-year-old son and a daughter who just turned seven. Mm -hmm. um, and they are um, the biggest part of my world that I would say that are my, my blessings. And often, sometimes I think I might be a little overwhelmed by my blessings. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. I get but it. But they, they definitely are my blessings. And um, I did hair for 15 years, which is the retail store I met Natalia at. It was a hair store. <laughs> um, I quit doing that. I want to say four or four years ago. I think it was four years ago. I quit uh, this past August, and I really didn't know what I was going to be doing. Um, I knew that I was really feeling like I needed to be able to spend more time with my kids. I knew that was a huge thing. Um, but also right when that happened, um, there was a, a month before trip started preschool. And in that month, the Lord said, okay, I've been asking you to lead a Bible study now for a while and you haven't had time. So now you do. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> let me get right on that. <laughs> and uh, I also had another lady who'd been asking me to come to something called BSF, which is Bible Study Fellowship. And he said, um, Our, Martha's been asking you to come to this for a really long time and you haven't had time. And now you do. And so I was like, okay. So I... I, the same week I um, put on Facebook, does anybody want to have a Bible study? I also signed up for BSF and they both actually started the same week. Um, that was not my intentions, but it just happened that way. <laughs> I'm an all or nothing person. So oh, yep. <laughs> that, just, that just fit right into what I did. And so um, 
that was that was a really cool thing and it was a needed thing also at the time because the way that I've grown in leading and teaching Bible studies also I needed to be a better wife and a better mom and so all of those things ended up working together to grow me and mature me in, in levels that I needed. Mm. That's mm -hmm. deep. <laughs> <laughs> so you had to get some act right, it sounds like. Oh, just yeah. A <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I'm not ashamed to say that. I needed a lot of act right. <laughs> right, 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 right. We all do. You know that 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 I call it like that gentle spiritual whooping that you get. Like, okay, come on over here, and you're like, uh. yeah, but I get it. Now, what does your life look like on a regular day? <laughs> what does my life look like on a typical day? <laughs> a typical day. That was a loaded question. Take your time. <laughs> so I we I get up at six and I usually do I have an awesome husband who brings me my coffee at six AM mm -hmm. and I am you know, I, I gave him that joke that day that talking about the husband's supposed to fix the coffee, he don't even drink coffee because the Bible says he brews. So There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I got that for a preacher. <laughs> I stole that. <laughs> but anyways, I was kind of joking, but kind of not when I said it to him. So anyways, he was like, I could do that for you. So, so he fixes my coffee and he brings me that at six and he leaves at about 620. And I do Bible study uh, while I'm drinking my coffee. Then I get my kids up at about 620 to 625. Mm -hmm. And I typically do some more Bible study and they watch some, they're watching cartoons. I want to teach them not to get up and be so rushed out the door. Like you just roll out and you just go. Mm -hmm. I want, I'm trying to teach them to get up and have some time and not do that. So that's what they do. And I usually do a little bit more Bible study and about 650. We start moving towards getting ready. We got a four month old puppy. She may pop up in the video. She's an Australian shepherd. Her name is okay. That's okay. And, <laughs> Always allowed. Yes. They can right. too. And so they um so she she's upstairs with us when all this stuff is going on. She gets really excited when it's time to get the kids up. And so it gets kind of chaotic from especially getting them ready, because we also have a 12 year old cat and Lacey loves the cat. The cat does not love Lacey. <laughs> <laughs> so and the kids love when when Lacey's you know jumping at her and pumpkins like get away from me growling and hissing and they think it's great and so we're getting ready to to get out the door um usually we leave between 7 45 and 7 50 um usually getting them to school going whoo at about eight o'clock, eight oh five, like we made it. I used to not even be able to make it to preschool on time. So this is a big deal for me <laughs> to be on time for school. And um any, if any of my family or friends watch that know this, that know that um I used to always be chronically late, they are laughing right now because <laughs> they know my struggle. <laughs> and that's also one of the reasons I tried to teach the kids to get up early so they're not rushed because I was rushed all of my life and so I'm like, I don't want to teach them that I want to teach them to to have that time um then every day is different every single day is different I don't have they're in school from eight to three and so sometimes I have BSL sometimes I help out my my parents have a farm sometimes I'm helping them on the farm or with farm like things um sometimes I am you know, helping mentor people, take trying to take them to lunch, trying to figure out what's going on with that. Um, it can be anything. And then Fridays, my husband is at home. So we're trying to get as much stuff done during the week or on Friday as we can before the kids get out of school. So I don't ever feel like I live the same day twice, um, which is Sometimes it's probably a good thing. And then other times I'm like, it would be nice to have a little routine. <laughs> right. <laughs> Got you. Got you. Got you. So that's, uh, that's, and then once I pick them up at, at about 310, it's on. Um, we got, we come straight home between taking care of the dog and 
homework, it goes straight into uh, dinner, goes straight into bath times, goes straight into, you know, getting them in the bed. And then I'm at the end of the day thinking this day flew by. <laughs> and I got to get up and do it again. <laughs> yes, yes. yes. Um, now I, I had you say all that for a reason and we'll come to it later. You know, I have a method to that. Oh, wow. I'm sorry. So I know Erica, um, I, in, in, when you sent me your testimony and I was looking through that and I was thinking, you, you, you talked about ministry, but you talked about ministry in the sense of your children mm -hmm. are your biggest ministry right now. Can you elaborate on that? Yes, I can. Um, whew, I'm gonna try to do it without crying, but I'm probably not going to succeed. <laughs> um, so when I first backing up to when I first quit work and I got into Bible studies and stuff and doing those things, um, and praying with women and seeing their lives change and, and things like that was really, really exciting. Um, that was also around the time that I got filled with the Holy Ghost. So I started realizing what church was supposed to really be like, what the body of Christ was supposed to, to be like. Um, and so there was this newness to the word and, and the power of the Holy Ghost and, and prayer that I had not really realized before. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to be real honest right now because, um, it's the truth. I got really, really excited about what was happening over there. And I got really, really just, uh about home. You know, like, all this is just, it, it just doesn't feel as important. It just doesn't seem as important. And so it was kind of boring compared to, to those things. And so I didn't realize, I, I wasn't consciously thinking those things at first. It was almost like a slow crawl away. And um, I had my best friend who was, who's often been the one who's kept me in check, um, that just basically told me that. She was like, Erica, you know, you can't be all excited about the, the, the ministry that God's given you. She's like, I definitely think that you are a minister of the word and that you are supposed to be um, helping people out there, helping women, helping teenagers, helping the broken. She's like, I think you're supposed to do that. She was like, but I think you're missing your first ministry at home, which is your kids. Oh, <laughs> are the wounds of a friend. Oh yeah. Yeah. Right. Everybody needs a friend like that. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so anyways, I took that to the Lord and he was like, you know, yes, that's definitely what is going on. And so, um, I tell people I, I almost got put in a time out during all of this. Um, because, um, I was, I was too excited about things and I was, I was messing up what he'd entrusted with me. That was with me, you know, right in front of my face. And so I, during that time out, I basically had to come to terms with, with, um, all of the, all of those emotions on like why they were happening and what, and what had happened to me that was pulling me away from my kids. And I mean, like part of it was, um, I think as a, 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 your battle with pride. I mean, we battle pride. So part of it was a battle with pride. And the other part of it was, um, was that I wasn't, I, I wasn't looking through the right lens of it all. And so when I started looking at things through the proper lens, which was, you know, the Lord has entrusted me with these two kids and I can't, uh, I want to point them to, to God and all that they do, you know, when they do good stuff, I want to point to them, you know, that God, that good things come from God's hand and your good, uh, your good deeds, your good works, you know, those are influences of the Holy Spirit. Those are not of you. The Bible doesn't say that we're good, you know, and so that's how the Holy Spirit is talking to you so that you 
um, hear this, so you see this, so that you understand that God is talking to you, even though you're as young as you are right now. And then through their disobedience, that God is graceful and He's merciful and He's forgiving. And and when we want to, when we need to correct those things, we can go to Him and we can pray. And it's through His help that we correct these things. That we are not seeking after behavior modification. Mm -hmm. We are seeking after a transformation in the heart. Yeah. And so, and then I just started realizing that. I didn't even know how to talk to my kids about, about any of that stuff. I didn't know I did, at the beginning of that, I didn't know how to do any of that. I didn't know how to tell them that they weren't good. I didn't know how to tell them, uh, talk to them about sin or any of that stuff. And so during that period of time, the Lord started showing me what I didn't know and how important it was for me to know these things and everything that I needed in that, in my life at that point started lining up with what I was going to teach with teaching my kids. Like, um, that's when I went into leadership at BSF and I was going to be a group leader for women. And the day that I went in, um, to pick up my packet and go over my training and all that stuff, I spoke with the children's leader that day. And the teaching leader called me after I left and she said, listen, you know, you, you spoke with Amy and Amy came up to me and said, listen, if you don't have to have Erica, I really want her. And so she said, you know, what do you think? And I said, I have said from the beginning, I'll be wherever God wants me to be. Mm -hmm. And she said, okay. She said, well, I'm gonna let you go with the children's leader because you know, there's something about this. And I said, okay, I hung up the phone and the Lord reminded me of a prayer just two weeks beforehand where I was crying out for the salvation of my children and that I didn't want to mess this up. And then I wanted to do right by them and I needed more understanding on how to lead them in that way. And then he put me right into being a children's leader two weeks later when I had plans to be something else. So everything really just kind of lined up with God showing me that I was out of order with what I wanted to do and showing me the importance of my, of my children and then showing me how to pour into them in the correct way. Mm. So mm. that's good. <laughs> I mean, he will do it. We just got to ask. <laughs> Wow, <laughs> that's a great testimony, just yeah. of how personally God is to you. And <clears throat> I, that's, I really appreciate that story. It's that humility of, you know, I mean, you, you know, you're obedient to what God is calling you to do. And then even the humility, not everybody can, can we all should aspire to that, that humility that when God came to you through your friend and said, hey, you're missing this over here. You know, but then there's more to the story too. I know I'm not going to short that, but that moment of humility and responding to um, the Lord's rebuke through a friend. Yeah. <clears throat> That's best <laughs> well, I had to pray. I will say that I have not always took criticism very well. And I tell people that um, there was some, it was probably, I think it was my mom who came and gave me some truth one day, I got mad. <laughs> and I, but I went to my prayer closet because the Lord said, you know, she's right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I, and I sat in there and I just cried and I said, Lord, I don't want to rebuke your wisdom and your correction through somebody else. Mm -hmm. I was like, please open my heart to receive your word in the right way when somebody is trying to help me that you have sent. And I, from that moment on, he sincerely answered that request. Mm -hmm. He sincere. And so when people tell me they struggle with that, I'm like, listen, just ask, <laughs> mm -hmm. just ask. Mm -hmm. It's true. It's true. Wow. That's, that's <laughs> deep. That's deep. <laughs> that's deep. But, but it's authentic. It's authentic. It is. Because he sees what's going on in your heart. Right. Right. And you have to be honest with that to respond. That's right. Right. And you're <laughs> and, and I'm sure whatever your mom and your friend told you, the delivery wasn't malice intended. There was nothing there was nothing about it that was cutting you down or like there was this thing heaped 
on top of heaped things. It was, hey, I love you. Let me let me show you something over here. <laughs> you know, and which, I wanted to protect it. <laughs> yeah, right, right, and that is important, especially on especially with that but i'm also thinking on the receiving end too because obviously this person had a voice in your life mm -hmm. as well so that is really cool okay so that gosh that is good that's good and I, there was a, that that's why i wanted you to talk about it because i think there are other moms women out there that need to hear that they need to hear that and it's important now erica you um you have your hands in a lot of things <laughs> in a good way, in a good way, in a good way, in a good way. So I want to talk about, um, yeah, I know you're doing BSF. I want to talk a little bit about that. And I want to talk about, um, or I want you to talk about um, RE3 worship and how that came to be. And then you put on a women's conference annually. Yeah, well, me and, and uh, my friend, Erica. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> he was the pastor's wife. Yep. Gotcha. Gotcha. I her, yep. So I, I heard, we heard a little bit about BSF, but I kind of wanted you to touch on those things and how that's incorporated into everything else. That's why I said you got a lot, a lot going on. <laughs> All right. So when I started with BSF, um, I kind of, I tell part of my testimony too. When I was um, I was going to my great uncle's church and I heard him one morning from the pulpit. He said, listen, something you better always ask God for is wisdom. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, and I, that stuck with me, you know, and for years, like two years, I prayed for wisdom, but I didn't ever open my Bible to receive it. <laughs> I did not. <laughs> no, he prayed for wisdom. You know, he said that, but he didn't say you get wisdom from reading the words. So, and I did, I was ignorant about that. I didn't know at the time when he said that. Ignorant in my thirties with that, did not know. Okay. And, um, so I remember when I started, I had, I had had trouble like reading and understanding the Bible before. So when I would get, you know, I'd get it out and I'd read something and, you know, I could understand the gospels pretty easy and, um, I, you know, different things like that. But, you know, there were some things that was just a little complicated. Yeah. <laughs> and so yeah. I just, yeah. I struggled with that. And so when I would read it, I would let that just I would let the fact that I didn't really understand what I was saying I would let that put just encourage me to put it away and be like oh well I, I'm I'm not gonna get this I'm not a Bible scholar I can't do this mm -hmm. and so when I started BSF I remember reading and answering these questions and really getting what it was saying and I was amazed because I was like where did this come from and the Lord was like, you remember all that wisdom you've been praying for? <laughs> <laughs> Won't he do it? And so it was like, I felt like all those two years of back prayers of wisdom, the Lord was like, this is where it's at. And so I did not gain understanding that wisdom come from the Bible until I started studying in BSF. And I did that. And my kids were, I think, four and two when we joined. Um, so they got to go to the children's program with me. A couple of trip got to go two years. I think Amy got to go four before she started school. And that is an amazing children's program, um, which, you know, I, I knew I knew it was just because the things that they were coming home and telling me and stuff, you know, I was like this, I didn't teach them this. <laughs> and so once I became a children's leader myself, I was like, Oh wow. This, I mean, it's so in depth what they teach them. And there, and the main, there's always a main truth about God and a, and an attribute about God. And it is, it is awesome to hear these little kids saying these things and repeating the Bible verses and these songs and things. And so um, I am a person who needs a plan and, an, and, and a plan helps me be accountable. Um, and so BSF is what worked well for me because it had both of those. It had the plan and the accountability in there. And so I just, it was, it was awesome. 
it was awesome to get in the word. And once I'd done that, I started seeing um, transformation in in me transformation in the way I thought transformation in mm -hmm. the way that I acted and the way that I parented and the way that I was um a wife and so I just continued to grow in that and and I love um I've loved the the women in that group I've loved the way that the bible study operates um I've loved leadership in there because you know then I get to see how the children's program worked and got to be a children's leader and um, even with all of this going on, you know, they're zooming it, you know, God's on. and the year this come out, y'all, this was so cool. Our theme for God that year was unstoppable. Oh, was yeah. unstoppable. <laughs> and so it. we're talking about from, from August all the way through that God's unstoppable. And then March, everything gets shut down and they missed uh one i think we may have missed one we might not have even missed one i mean they went straight to zoom and i said i'm gonna just tell you what if this doesn't show that god is unstoppable this is the theme mm -hmm. <laughs> and he was like yeah we're not, we're rolling straight through that and yes. you know i just thought that was just the most awesome thing to see so I have, um, I've just, I have loved everything about BSF and I encourage everybody that is like me. If you need a plan. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's why I had you send me the stuff too, because it, it helps having some structure. And I like what you said with the accountability. Um, so yeah, that's, that's, that's amazing. Um, now RE3 worship. Um, and I had the privilege of being interviewed by you back in the summer. I want to mm -hmm. say it was June. Yep. In June. And I, it, and that was so good, by the way, it was really awesome. And, um, I want to know the vision and the heart. We want you to tell everybody the Lord's vision and heart for that. And, um, anything that he, that you feel like you can release that he wants to do more with it in the future. If you mm -hmm. feel led to do that. Well, I'm gonna go back to the beginning to the very beginning uh, because I think there's an important lesson that that just just I feel real strong I need to say okay so um I did not have a name for it but it from the very beginning before it was before I even had kids I had seen me interviewing people and knew that it was going to be on like a video type thing like this and um that I was going to be sharing their testimonies and so it was just, it was just a real strong desire in my heart to do. And uh, there was somebody that I wanted to tell about this. And the Lord said, mm -mm, do not say something to them. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't at first. And as weeks went on and I was kind of talking to the Lord about what does this even look like? Because I don't even think I was on social media at this with all, like in my mind, I was like, it's going to be just a YouTube channel. And I didn't even know how to do that because um, I am not a technological person. Thank the Lord, my husband knows some stuff, but I am not. And so <laughs> I knew I was going to, whatever it was, I was going to have to have a lot of help. And because um, I was clueless. And so you know, it's a couple of weeks go by and I, I finally was just like, I'm just going to say something anyway. And I just, again, the Lord was like, no, but I did. I said something to that person and that person just immediately just was like, well, I don't think you need to be worried about anything like that. I think you, you need to be focusing just on your family and that's it, you know? And the Lord was like, I told you not <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> not to do this. So you know, we got to be careful who we who we say things mm -hmm. because um, that person did not mean to to do that to me. He meant well, mm -hmm. but some not everybody is going to understand the way that God is leading you. Right, and so don't don't just be going out just telling everybody everything because that can that can hinder you. And so I was kind of upset about that for a while, but at the same time, I knew that, I mean, I didn't even know how to, be, how to begin. So he hadn't gave me step one yet. So I knew it wasn't time. So fast forward several years. Um, 
it started coming back to me again that I needed to get ready to do this. And I was like, okay, well, what is this going to look like? Well, by then it was like people were getting on Facebook, doing Facebook videos. And I was like, oh, well, maybe, <laughs> maybe I can figure this out. I can figure this out or ever can figure this out. And so, you know, we started thinking about it from, from that aspect of doing stuff. And so there was, um, I st did not have a name, did not have a name for it. Um, and so this was actually before the Facebook live videos. There was, I kept seeing um, regenerated, restored, and why is the other word skipping me? Um, it was three REs and the Lord told me to write them down. I'd have to look them up right now because it's just totally just not in my mind. So I wrote these words down, redeemed, restored, regenerated. That's what it was. I wrote these three words down and I looked at it and I was like, oh man, they both start with R. It's three words. He said, look again. And I looked, I was like, oh, they start with R E. He's like, circle that. So I circled it and then I wrote a three. Well, that afternoon, <laughs> I'm out and I had went to Greensboro and I, I was driving past, past this house. And there was literally a roofing company with RE3. I'd never seen that sign there before. It was a RE3 roofing company. And I looked and I said, what is that? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, that is weird. Mm -hmm. So then I'm coming, I came back home and I got in the car and I went to pick up the kids in Reedsville and saw a sign going to Reedsville the other way. So both ways I went that day, I saw RE3 ribbon twice. <laughs> After I wrote it down, I wanted to circle it. Uh -huh. And I said, that is crazy. And then there was, uh, and then it's still, I was like, man, that is just wild. And that's all I was thinking. Well, it was like a week or two later, I pulled up in my driveway. And as I pulled up in my driveway, it was just, it settled on me that that was the name, Redeem, Restored, Regenerated. Um, RE3, RE3 worship, that is people's Jesus story. And I was like, oh, and then, then it kind of all came together with that. And even like this year when, when COVID came and we just were, were all at home, you know, he was like, all right, let's get some of this going. And so, and it still is, it's not a fast moving thing for me. And I think it can't be because I do have so many, many things going on. And so, and he's told me to be okay in this place that I'm, yes. that I'm at. Yes. You know, he's like, you don't need to be doing, need to be super busy with this. Um, because you, because it will take away what your children need from you and what your husband needs from you. Mm -hmm. And you don't have but so much time. And so I don't push anything. Um, I, I pray about it and I ask him to, you know, send me people when it's time and, and do that kind of thing. And then, but other than that, it's just, it's, it's something that's sitting there. Then I'm like, Lord, it's here. It's for you. And I, I'm not trying to do all this extra work to, mm -hmm. to make it go somewhere because, you know, God is the one that, who is the conductor driving that train. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm just, I'm just the one on there doing what he says. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. Amen. Yep. I wanted to ask you about the, uh, I know you did some, some things this year with, uh, I think it was R3 worship and that was with the, um, yeah, a little forum there, a yeah. two-part series on, uh, on racism and so forth. And I wanted you to speak to that because, um, I do remember you doing that and, and I thought that was so awesome. Um, because that's a conversation that is not had enough. And I don't think it's had near enough within the four walls of the church. Yeah, and so, I, uh, <clears throat> I just wanted to give you the floor to kind of talk about that, how God put that on your heart, and and kind of what have you seen from those conversations uh, uh, since then? So I will say, I just I was really disturbed by what I was seeing going on with racism in in in. I'm like, why is this happening in the church? <laughs> you know, to me, when I look at it, I'm like, you know, God made all of these different colors and all of these mm -hmm. different nationalities. And mm -hmm. 
we're going to all be up in heaven worshiping together. Yes. We're going to have different churches. We're going to have different mm -hmm. nations. That we're going to be all together just yes. worshiping. Yes. And it's always been something on my heart that, that we need to love one another. Yeah. And so when this mm -hmm. stuff started coming out, I just was like, I, there is something that I've got to do. I'm like, I don't know what, I, what I've got to do. And he's like, you have a platform. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and so, I was like, um, okay. Now that makes me really nervous to yeah. do that. You know, this is, this is not, this is kind of like a taboo subject, if you will. Like people right. just don't really talk about this stuff. I'm, and I was like, what if I mess it up? What if I get it wrong? What if, you know, what if, what if somebody starts attacking me because of this, that, and the other? And he was like, why are you worried about all that stuff? Mm -hmm. And so he started, you know, I had just in my group of friends, I have um, just an array of people and that would be perfect for, for doing these things. And so I was like, okay, well, let me start asking. And so I had a conversation with one person who just jumped on it. She was like, yes, we need to be doing this. And so her and I started praying and it just immediately grew from that. And, um, and I can say that from the biggest thing that I that I'll say that discussions that come that have come from that is there's not there's there's too many assumptions going on mm -hmm. there's too many assumptions um and and that's what I have told um people from this that that talk that that came away from this I'm like listen we can't assume that we know what it's like to be a black person. I can't assume. I don't know um, how people have talked to you. I don't know how people have treated you. I don't know any of that. But if I take my experience and I put my experience on everybody else, mm -hmm. then I have already caught been I'm already part of the problem. Mm -hmm. I'm already part of, of the not, not allowing people to have their own experiences. And it's the same thing with the difference between a man and a woman, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. I mean, I, I know that women are treated differently than men. It's not fair for, for a man and a woman to say that we always get treated the same on these, on these different platforms and levels They, they you don't. Right, and right. so I think that I, me being able to talk to people that I know and said, Hey, um, instead of you pretending like, you know, what their life is like. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. why don't you ask questions first? Right. Mm -hmm. Because I, that's what I've done is I've asked questions and been like, well, yeah. what has happened with you? And, you know, and, mm -hmm. and when you actually hear some of the stuff that ha yeah. that's happened, mm -hmm. then, then you can, sh and then that leaves the, the door open for both sides yes. to mm -hmm. talk and mm -hmm. have a conversation right. and say, this is what happens has happened in my life. And this is what's happened in my life. And then there's some common ground mm -hmm. and there's some love there. Yes. <laughs> yes. And, and, and it grows. But when there's all these assumptions that you think, you know, what, how somebody else has had it, or you think, you know, why somebody's doing something mm -hmm. to judging people of their heart when we don't have no business judging anybody's yeah. heart. Right. right. You know, it causes a big disconnection and a rift in the church. And we have got to move past that. We have got to, to stop. And I, I agree with you. And just to take it just a little step further. And then did you have something else? Um, even, and I'm going to go here. I think sometimes too, and this is part of human nature, I guess, is you will gravitate to who you're comfortable with, who looks like you, who sounds like you, and somebody else that comes along that's different that might make you a little uncomfortable. And it doesn't necessarily have to do with race. It just might be that this person is different. Right. Sometimes it is, sometimes it is racial. Being willing to get to know that person even though they're different than you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Maybe their culture or how they worship um, or how they sound is different. Um, it's all 
a fragrance to the Lord when we all mm -hmm. come together and worship corporately. Okay. It's beautiful to him, whether mm -hmm. you are beating your breast, whether your hands are raised, whether you twirling in the corner with flags or whether you just sit there and quietly just in reflection, he received okay. it all and it's to be celebrated. So anyway, mm -hmm. I don't want to go too much farther into that. That's another, <laughs> that's for another time. Yeah. But did you have something else? Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, I, I was one going to say, I think that um, the courage it took to step out and to do that mm -hmm. is um, is big and there needs to be more of that. And also, I, I just couldn't help but notice that when you're you're talking about that <clears throat> and it would be one of the listen and ask questions, again, goes back to that humility and that meekness um, that it takes to put yourself down to hear what the other person experiences so you can understand and so you can grow and develop that relationship. And that's all that, um, that's the body of Christ. You know, the, the, the eye say to the, to the foot, you know, the, <laughs> the eye can see, but can't get there without the foot, <laughs> you know, right. you know, so we all need each other. Right. Um, yeah. In that. And so <clears throat> it's beautiful. I thank you for doing that. And I just wanted to hear more to talk about that. And so, um, now, um, you know, have you seen like more uh, conversations or things like that or more relationships restored from that or? Um... I've definitely, uh, the conversations, the conversations have been huge um, mm -hmm. that I have had with, um, with just different people that I know, just, just with, with understanding people that didn't see the Facebook video that wasn't on there, that I've got to share what, um, what, what was shared on that video and the fact that I have, I have personally seen change in the way that these people have, uh, speak mm -hmm. and the way that they think about these topics. I have got to see that. And they didn't even watch the video. It's just been conversations that, mm -hmm. that we had mm -hmm. as a result mm -hmm. of this. And so, um, I think it's something that's supposed to continue to mm -hmm. continue going on because our ch the church has got to heal right yes. from these things and um mm -hmm. and put down not just the offense but the defense yes. you know the offense and the defense is so high mm -hmm. and uh mm -hmm. and so we got to put that stuff down so that we can love one another well right exactly we're family and we're going to get You've heard me say this, Erica. We're going to spend an eternity together. We just practice yeah, it down we here. Practice. <laughs> we just practice it down here. We're going to be, yeah, we gonna yeah. be in heaven spending an eternity together. We got to get it right here. <laughs> I agree. Amen. Mm -hmm. So, anything else, darling? No. Okay. So, let's talk about um, the ladies' conference. Okay. Um. I heard you say, I've heard Erica, and I think I might have misunderstood because I've heard somebody else mention the name, and I assumed it was you when they were talking about this person. I didn't realize it was another person until just now. I was like, oh, okay. But um, you had it at Canaanland this year, mm -hmm. and I got to tune in a little bit. There was a lot happening that weekend, <laughs> too, with us. Um, but listening to it and the women... It was, it was, I want to just say that it was a safe space mm -hmm. for women. And I was online watching. It was a, a place where women knew, I'm sure the presence of God was thick there. Cause I mean, I'm watching it and I'm just like, there were women who just, just came and just, many of them in so many words came undone while they were there. Mm -hmm. and release things and allow the Lord to minister to them. And I was just, I was, I was very, um, just overwhelmingly like excited watching on your little phone, um, the event. And I missed some of it, um, because of things going on, but it was, but there was love in that room too. Oh, yeah. There was love in that room mm -hmm. and you could tangibly feel it through the electronics. Okay. There was love in that room. I want you to talk about that because this was, is this, that was the third year that that's went on now? Um, no, I want to say, uh, 
we counted it up maybe five or six. Oh, okay. I was way uh, up. Okay, good. Five or six. <laughs> so the very first year, the pastors, the pastor at Canaan Land is Jason <laughs> Sigmund <laughs> and his wife, Lacey. His <laughs> wife is, is um, mine, that's why. <laughs> The cat, the cat and the dog are both sitting here going, okay. <laughs> they're like, mm -mm. so, so the pastor's wife is Erica Sigmund and Erica and I were not really friends in high school. I, I don't even think we talked, um, in high school. We just, we never had any classes together. And so we connected like the summer before uh, maybe like a year before all of this ended up coming about and she wanted to put together a, um, a women's conference. And so I said, you know, I was like, well, I can, I can help. What can we do? So, you know, we just kind of jumped in and, and started figuring stuff out. I'm a, I love to plan. I'm a planner. I'm an executor. So I, I do that kind of stuff. Uh, pretty well. I like to assign people like you'd sign up for this and you know, I'm like checking on you, making sure how you got this done. And so I like to do all that stuff. And so we, we done it that first year and she's like, well, we're just going to do this every year. And, but I was taken aback every year that conference has grown. The number of people that has come has grown. Um, the it there is there is a freedom there's a freedom to worship there is a freedom to come broken there is a freedom to come and receive the help that you need um there's nobody in there faking anything if i mean we pray we do fast on fridays and pray um you know asking god to bring the right people and for their hearts to be ready because we don't want them to be the the same don't leave the same yeah. They hear us say that the whole time. You got, you came here, get what you came for. Don't walk back out those doors the same as you walked in. You're here for a reason. Get it. And so to see the Lord this past year, um, in the, the, the COVID, Lacey, <laughs> in COVID, we thought that we were, was all, like, oh, nobody, nobody's probably going to, gonna come it's gonna be the smallest group but that's mine I, we're still gonna do it we're gonna we're gonna do whatever needs to be done and uh we serve breakfast in the morning it's a free conference um the lord has made had provides every year to make sure that it is free um and so, and that part is all him because you know the food and every all that stuff ends up being paid for and so we had somebody offer to fix breakfast for us this year. So, you know, I'm telling her to dumb down the numbers and she's like, I'm just going to do enough for 50. I'm like, you know, we don't never have over like 20, like even on a good year. I'm like, you don't need to do that much. She's like, nope, I'm going to do 50. I'm like, all right, well, you have at it. You're doing extra work. We had over 40 for breakfast. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, yeah. So I was like, well, I sure am glad that she was hearing the Lord on that because I was not, <laughs> um, but it was, and it was a packed house. It was a packed house. Um, our, 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 the, the fellowship hall was packed for breakfast. Um, the parking lot was packed. Um, I don't think another car could have gotten in there. So I think there's talk next year of, of trying to find a different facility. And we've always known that God was going to move it out of that church um because it was it's a smaller church so we've known that and i i just remember being like you know what i think i think it just happened i think we just reached reached the end of this and seeing where he goes with that but every year to see to see what god does um is is nothing short of amazing yes. nothing short of amazing so i'm assuming that it's in the works for planning again next year Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yes. Yeah. And it's usually the uh second or third week in September. So okay. yeah. Once it gets about April, we usually uh March, April, it's the dates locked down and we go from there. That's awesome. So good. All right. Well, we got a few minutes left. Um this has been so good. I feel like we need to have another part two, probably. <laughs> There's more. Oh, there's a lot more. There's a lot more. Yeah. <clears throat>
is good. But I wanted to, I always wanted to try to end it with, you know, just talking about, you know, because I was, you had that moment of stepping out and doing that, and then <clears throat> calling from the Lord, and and you know, even with this thing with the the talking about the race racism and uh, racial healing, um, there's that moment of just you know, anxiety and nervousness. Can I do this? Is am I am, am I the right person, Lord? <laughs> uh, you know, and many times you've had that, and and also you got a family mm -hmm. that um, and God had to get on you about you know being too involved over there and, and neglecting this. We had all of that going on, and so there's a lot that you had to take account for. And mm -hmm. I know there's a lot of people out there that hearing your story, knowing that you're just an ordinary person, <laughs> you know, just Erica. <clears throat> yep. Right, but you got a big God, right? That's right. And, and you're experiencing His bigness, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I want just to kind of chat about that, and just kind of uh, as we kind of as we close out, just um, you know, taking that step, you know, to encourage the people who are listening, someone who might be feeling that, and they just need to step out. Yes, yes. I mean, I'm gonna tell you, there's. The very first Bible study that I ever led, I was so nervous. I was like, Lord, you have done picked the wrong one. I am not, I am not the one. I am not the one. And um, I mean, from doing that to to doing to doing interviews and to um even um to just even some of the people that I have mentored the situations that they have been going through I'm like Lord I'm not the one I can't tell you how many times I have said Lord I'm not the one and every time he has come through and been like you are the one but it's not because of you it's because of me and every and he is just the provision that he gives when you obey i go back to to abraham and what it took for abraham to leave his leave everything he knew behind to go to a land he didn't know exactly where he was going to but when we trust god above trusting ourselves so we gotta we got to get to that place where um we do it afraid we do it afraid because you trust god you do it afraid and it's and he's going to start with little stuff but then he is going to ask you to do some big stuff you know it's going to feel really big and you are going to be like i am not but the blessing and the you don't see god work unless you give him opportunity to do so yeah. so when i have stepped out knowing that i wasn't the one all it did was create space for god to show that he was mm -hmm. and he has done it every single time because there is there is nothing about me that set me apart. I mean, you can ask, you can ask my mama. She'll tell you. Mm -mm. <laughs> you know, <laughs> she, there was nothing about me that really set me apart to do the things that God has called me to do, and that I've stepped out and done. And I, He is no respecter of persons. If He if He sets these dreams in your heart, then they're there, and and you're walking in step with Him, then He will do his part to get you to where he's told you to go i mean i i always i think knew there was a part of me that wanted to be a teacher but you know when when he showed me teaching the bible i was like <laughs> not that <laughs> i don't know enough you know but it's the holy spirit who does those things and with every with every yes that you give god um, he, you know, your faith grows, your trust in him grows, and you need that faith and trust to grow because you're going to go through things in your life that you need to know who God is. And if you've kept him like this to where you don't know who he is because you're not saying yes, then when you need that faith and trust, it's not there. Right. It's not there. Mm. Right. <clears throat> I like you. I like what you said. You're going to go through some stuff and that's when you learn who he is in that moment in that stuff so mm -hmm. yes well this is good erica <laughs> <laughs> this is good i'm so glad that you agreed to to come on here uh, i had to strong arm no i didn't i'm just playing i didn't have to start <laughs> <at all. laughs> no but i am I, I i am i will say this um 
you have been just amazing. Um, and you're, you're not only have you just been amazing to watch and to learn from, but you have been an amazing friend to me, um, especially in this last year. You have been an amazing, yeah, yeah, don't, don't. I didn't, I didn't bring no <laughs> tissue over here. But I mean, I mean that with the, the, from the bottom of my heart, I have, I am very blessed by you and your relationship. Um, you and Miss Andrea, y'all have, y'all have walked with me and y'all have cheered me on. And I just love the God in both of y'all very, very much. Very, very much. So, y'all, I didn't prepare for that. <laughs> yeah, the feeling is definitely mutual. And, to, you know, you to see what you've walked through this, this past year and the faith and the praise that's still been on your lips through these times mm -hmm. that you, that, I mean, is very inspiring and it's very motivating to also see that within you. And mm -hmm. so I felt the timing of our relationship and, um, and Andrea being brought, brought into my yeah. life and then into your, and then the connecting us all. I mean, that was a total, yeah. A total God, yeah. a total yeah. God moment. It was a movement of the Lord. <laughs> yes. Yes. Electricity and just, you know, like you get these three people together and they just, you know, you know, I hope you catch up on your Marco Polos today. So <laughs> I need to. Yes. I always look. I'm like, oh yeah, no, we gotta stop. We gotta stop. So she catch <laughs> Well, thank you so much for being on with us tonight. Um, we loved it. We loved having you. And um, did you wanna add anything else? Yeah. yeah, the pets, they want to they want to join us. Yeah, the pets want to, buddies <laughs> right here. The very end. Yeah, 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 yeah. buddies on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> well, we love you and everybody, thanks so much for uh join. Oh, one other thing, really, really quickly, and I'm gonna put this in the notes of the live as well. How do people get in touch with you? Um, if you just hop on RE3 worship their page, you can just met, message me on on there on Facebook. Um, I'm on Instagram though. I haven't put a lot of stuff on there yet. Um, yeah. <laughs> I got the YouTube videos. I got, so I get my YouTube channels, RE3 worship. So, but I'd say right now that the, um, the Facebook message is probably the, the quickest way to get to me if they wanted to chit chat. Okay. And I'm going to put that in the comments of the live and I'm sure there were comments y'all. I'm gonna have to go back and look at them because it was just too much to toggle back and forth. Please forgive me. We are, we are still working on that stuff, but um, I will put all her contact information in the bottom um, of the live so that you can follow up with Miss Erica. So I love you very much. Um, y'all, thank y'all for having me, and thank you for doing what y'all are doing. <laughs> Thank you. Well, we, and, and like you said, the technical stuff, I feel like I'm getting a crash course in the communication school that I never went to. <laughs> I'm like, how do you do this? <laughs> All right, y'all. We'll see y'all later. Good night. All right. Bye. All right. Good night. Thank y'all.